those that aren't here, Max asked a great question. Um, does it have to be inside parentheses to be to cause a horizontal change? Like later on, we're going to look at functions like this: three times e to the negative four x plus one uh, minus seven. Okay, that's going to be like an exponential function. You're like jeepers, what the heck is that? Well, you'll see later on, and it's really not as bad as you might think. But anytime we would change this x to instead like x plus two. Um, is still going to go ahead and shift it to the left too, okay? Um, and or if I let's just say if I did something like this instead, y equals that doesn't address exactly what I want, x minus seven. So if I would change that now to y equals three e to the x plus two plus seven, is the plus two in parentheses? No, but still it's kind of nested inside of my function. It is the input into that. Um, e to the x function. It might, like I said, it might be a sine function, whatever. But yeah, inside the absolute values, yep, yep, doesn't have to be parentheses, just the function itself. Come in. Okay. Okay. Anything else? You guys said this was eh, medium, eh, but there's absolutely no questions at all. Because you don't want to just tell me, oh, this is easy, Rex Road. Because then I'll move on, which I'm going to anyway, so. Yeah. 26, del C6. Okay. <clears throat> so 26 is dealing with this one. Okay. I like, th I like this question. So I got y equals 3x quantity squared. Okay. So <clears throat> what we're supposed to do is identify, um, describe the dilation. Okay. I don't know if I used the term dilation yesterday, um, but a dilation is... It's a non-rigid transformation. Stretches and shrinks are dilations. When I say dilate, what do you think about? Eyes. Your eyes. Your pupils getting larger, so it lets too much light in. You're like, oh man, my eyes are all dilated. Okay. Um, well, in this case, you can dilate things just horizontally or vertically. Okay. That's those are still called dilations. So this one, the three is inside, so it's going to cause a horizontal. Okay. And is it going to be a stretch or a shrink, since it's times three? Shrink, it's going to be the opposite. So it's going to be a shrink times one third, okay? So there's a couple different ways you could do this. You could just take your parent function, which has the points 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, um, 2, 4, and negative 2, 4, okay? You can sketch that first if you want. And then, if you wanted to, I don't really have another great color, so I'll just go darker. This is, is one away, so now it's going to be one-third away. This is one away horizontally, so now it's going to be one-third away. So what we're doing is kind of like what we talked about before, is we got one, one. We're dividing this, or multiplying your x-coordinate by one-third. So it's two away, now it's going to be two-thirds away. And what it does is it brings everything in like this. Now, some of you guys think, might, might look, might think, well that doesn't look like it's been horizontally shrunken, it looks like it's been vertically what? Vertically stretched, okay? Are those the same thing? Yes, they are, and equation-wise, take a look at this. If I would rewrite this, that'd be nine x squared. So, shrunken by one-third, is the same as vertically being dilated by nine in this case. So it does look like it's been vertically stretched because it, you can look at it that way if it's, if it's been vertically stretched. So it could be either way. Okay, but the way it's written, I would lean heavily towards, hey, it's horizontally shrunk by a third. And then go from there. Okay, anything else? Jeepers. Okay. Well, then, um, I'm going to do this here real quick. Um, not going to be the greatest uh, recording on YouTube, but um, let's get your quizzes um, back to you. I'll go over them real quick. <coughs> I don't have them recorded yet, so this will just take me a few minutes. Um, I'll tell you what, while I'm, um, while I'm getting these recorded, I'll just put up what was the rest of yesterday's assignment? 
um, and that'll be our start of today's assignment. So if you wanted to use that time wisely, you definitely can. So it'd be from that same page, but I'll go ahead and update this, um, page 116, um, 48 through 51. I cut that back yesterday. Um, so while I'm recording this, or these, I'll go ahead and let you guys work on that. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, as I call your name, I'll set them on the blue book up here. And then, um, then we can go from there. Dom? Sam? Kennedy. A lot of these are awesome. Max. Carter. You did so good, I'll hand it to you. Won't even make you get up. Connor. I was really very pleased with this on the most part. I thought, I thought there are some great scores here. John? Okay, average was um, 32.2. Um, which is 85%. Um. Go to 
this real quick. And, and I'll be honest with you, if, if you've got no questions or anything, if you just want to work on that assignment, you can definitely just kind of ignore me, which uh, I don't say that very often. Yes, Mr. Drescher. He's actually gone today, or he's he's not. He, I think he is. Yep, yep. All right. No, sorry. Oops. Oh, really? No, well, I've. That's one thing I forgot. So. Oh. Okay, so so on all these, I, I, I circled what you did wrong. Um, here's what I wanted to see, of course, a good scatter plot. Right here, um, some people just had them squished in too much. I'd just go ahead and spread them out so you get a nice, nice line that's, that's not too crunched together. Um, common mistake I saw was that, you get, uh, that some people just used um, data points. If we're just going to pick a couple data points, don't, uh, you don't have to draw the graph. So. Um, so draw it and then pick a couple points that are on your graph and then go from there. And I did want to see some work so I knew which points you were using. And, um, and mine ended up being about 4.4, a lot of yours around 4. Um, I did have one that was like 5.6 and I could not figure out what, what was wrong. But, um, but since I could find a mistake, I just left it. Um, so otherwise, about 96, 97. And one thing too is that, one thing, if once you get your equation, take 104, plug it in, see if you get 60. Take 113, plug it in, and see if you get 100. Check your equation to see if it's right. Okay, and then 96 women. Okay, so um, negative, positive, none. Uh, you guys did really well with those. Um, four, you know, honestly, I think these should be just like four um, automatic points. Um, so. Um, but so we had some people struggle with this f of zero. Zero is between one and negative one and two, so my result's going to be five. G of one, I'll go over to G. One is between zero and two, so I'll plug one into that right there, and I'll get one. F of negative one, f of negative one is, fits this category, so the opposite of negative one plus six gives me seven. G of negative five, negative five is right in this area, so I take the absolute value of negative five. Okay. Um, still struggled with some with some of these graphs a little bit, but um, um, I guess I'm not sure quite what else to do on some things. Um, some people left gaps; they stopped this at negative one. Well, it goes all the way to zero, so it's negative one all the way to zero, and this one is two x all the way from zero to three, not just from one to three goes all the way from 0 up to 3. Okay, and how would we graph that? My slope is 2, my y-intercept is 0, it's just going to boogie on up. And or you could plug in point two, 6, and then from there it's just 6. Here we technically have a closed circle and then an open circle, but it just fills right into it, just a point. Okay, this one had a lot of people stop at negative 1 and 1 and didn't fill in this part here and this part here. So you still got to plug those in and figure out where it would go because it says greater than zero. So you still got to consider one tenth, two tenths, half, a quarter, three quarters, stuff like that. Um, so you got to go all the way to that point. And how would we graph this? Well, I went negative x plus four. So my y intercepts four and I'm going down to the slope of negative one. We can do that with our brain tied behind your back on the most part, I think. This one, negative 2x minus 2, so it's going to have a y-intercept of negative 2. It's going to have a slope of negative 2, up 1 over 2, uh, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, going in the negative direction makes it negative. Okay. Greatest integer function. Still have some people struggling with this. Greatest integer function is the greatest integer that's less than or equal to what I'm plugging in. So 0, I get 0, but then I subtract 2. Okay. 1 half, slide to the left, I get 0. And then I subtract 2. And you end up with a graph that looks something like that. Number 8, you guys all did, did great with that. Um, my vertex is negative 1, 2. And a vertex, you know, by, by memorizing like we did the other day, my vertex is negative 1, 2. What we're doing is we're actually um, we're memorizing a process that takes care of the 
inside horizontal opposite all four of us. Okay? Inside is the opposite, you know, and the outside is just up two. Okay? <clears throat> but yeah, it's gonna open down. Nine. Nine, I was kind of disappointed in nine. Some, some of you guys need to think more about what the, pro, uh, the realistic situation is here. And this was probably one of the more commonly missed ones. So let's think about it. If you go into a business and, and you actually end up doing zero, they do zero work for you, how much are they going to charge you? Zero. Okay? So that's why I have an open circle. Okay? What about a half hour? Well, the way it's worded, every fraction of an hour, they're going to charge you 40 bucks because it says charge you $40 per hour or any fraction thereof. So half hour, they're going to charge you for a full hour. So half hour is 40 bucks. Three quarters of an hour, 40 bucks. One hour, 40 bucks. Just a little bit over an hour, they're going to charge you for how many hours? Two hours. So they're going to charge you for two hours. So um, a lot of people had it flat here for a little bit, and then you were getting charged $40 for between one and two hours. But actually, they're going to round up to the, to the next hour. So it's not exactly a greatest integer function graph, but it's still considered a step function. Okay. Ten. Ten. Oh, people did great with this, with this deal, but if you had to have 250 times the pounds, and 350 times the pounds, you can't just say 250 and 3. You need a variable there. Okay. And how do we graph this? Well, zero, my cost is zero. Um, 10, I take that times 3 and I end up with 30, and there's my line connecting those two. Now if we go down to um, 20 pounds, oh, wait a minute, my graph is in the wrong spot. So all of your graphs were in the wrong spot. Hold on, 20 should be 60. Okay, so 20, if I plug in 20 into this, I get 50. So your graphs were fine, I just didn't, didn't catch that mine was that different. And 30, I would get 75. So it's going to look like this. They're not at the same point here, because um, the cost for 20 pounds at this rate is not the same cost as the 20 pounds at this rate. Okay, and how did I get this other part up here? Plugged in 20 pounds, figured out how much it costs. Okay, and uh, plugged in 30 pounds, figure out how much it costs. And that was just worth one point for that, one point for the equation. Go back. You guys did great with 10A, because um, it's got, it's two to the left, three down, and it's times three, so it's going to have a slope of three. Okay, and it might help if I would at least show what I'm doing here. Okay, let me widen out so it's not so critical. This part here, oh, this was kind of hit and miss. When x is less than 1, my result's negative 2. Or 0, x minus 2. And then we have x minus 5. Um, my slope is 1, and my y-intercept is five, negative 5. So my slope is 1, and then if I go down one more, it would have had a y-intercept of negative 5. This one... This one, my slope's negative 2. I think that one's pretty easy to see. But then as far as my y-intercept, I don't have the graph up there, so you couldn't really step it out. I just went ahead and did my work up here to go ahead and find what my y-intercept would be. Okay? So, on this bottom part, 3.7, the greatest integer that's less than or equal to 3.7 is 3. This one is negative 2. This one, it's not negative 4, because that's not less than or equal to negative 4.1. So remember, slide to the left. If you think about a number line, negative 5, negative 4.1, I've got to go to this integer that's less than or equal to. The range of 10a, well, it's y is greater than negative 3. How come? Because if I take a look at all my y's used, that's my lowest y used, and all the other y's used were all of those. That's all my y's that are greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay? Jeepers. Um, bonus A. I broke it up into two parts because it is a piecewise function. 
from zero to one hour, it's going to soak up all of that 60 milliliters. Okay? So 60 milliliters in an hour. Okay? The other part, it's going to have a, and I, I, I actually think when I graded yours, my key was wrong. So if you have something really close to this, let me know. I'll probably give you something back. So I had like 120th. I don't know what I was thinking. So it's negative three per hour because we're going to lose 60 milliliters in that 20 hours, so it's negative three. We're losing three milliliters per hour. And then why does it have a, a 60 and 120th? Just to get my equation to work out right. Because my y-intercept would actually be just a little bit higher. Okay? So. B, um, I wasn't quite sure what to say about mine. Um, I don't know, one thing I think I'm really good at is, is fixing stuff. Give me something to fix and I can fix it. In the last two weeks, I fixed my mother-in-law's microwave twice now. And, um, and uh, just fixing things around the house, I consider myself really good at that. Um, rather than that. So. Otherwise, I'll put up a deadline. We'll consider that within a week. Um, let's go ahead and get right back to the video here. Okay. Um... Yeah, I would consider myself good at math, but but like, but like um, calculations in my head, I'm really not very good at. Like somebody will say, okay, this is like a dollar seventy-five, and I need like uh, twenty-six of them. Mark, how much is that? And I'm like, <laughs> um, uh, got a got a calculator for me, you know, stuff like that. Um, but um, yeah, I'm I'm very thankful for having an ability that I can do something with like I like I am so okay so 28 or 2.8 2.8 we've already worked on um, with your with your worksheets with your graphing and shading okay so we're just going to talk just about a couple things here real quick and then I'm going to turn you loose and um, and give you something for the next couple days okay um, well let's just take a look at a couple things First thing, graphing stuff like these first four, all of those were addressed by the um, by the worksheets. Okay, y is less than or equal to four. Can somebody describe what that graph would look like? Y is less than or equal to four. Uh, all lines are straight. Hor yeah, it'd be horizontal. Yeah, it'd be horizontal on four, and then everything would be shaded below, okay? Because it's going to hit the uh, y-axis at 4, it's going to be horizontal, everything down below. This one, x is greater than negative 6. Vertical line hits at negative 6. Shade to the right, okay? And then these two, you can either use your intercepts or you can go ahead and get it y equals and then go ahead and pick a test point and go from there, okay? Now, Real life stuff. Um, a lot of times we're dealing with a limitation. We're limited in what we can spend. We're limited in the time we have. We're limited in our resources. So if we take a look at this problem right here, number five, just a real quick example. Greg needs to buy gas and oil for his car. Gas costs three forty-five a gallon, and oil is two forty-one a quart. He has fifty bucks to spend. That's really a pretty straightforward situation. The last thing um, you want to do is get up to the cash register and not have enough money. Has anybody done that recently at all? You've done it? Isn't it embarrassing? Oh, uh, so what'd you do? Oh, you pulled out the debit card instead. Okay. Yep. Dang it. <laughs> it's usually like when there's when there's um like like an attractive person behind you, you're like, hey, how you do oh, oh hey. Um, uh, 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 can, I, can I borrow some money? I've got to tell you this one story, though. So I go all the way out. Yeah, this is going to be on YouTube. That's great. Okay. So I go all the way out to state cross country one year and, um, and uh, j just to watch. Okay. And I park my car. I ride the shuttle. And I wa I'm just walking up to the entrance. And then I see people there taking money. 
and I have no cash on me whatsoever. I did, wasn't worried about it because I can fill up my car with my credit card. I was like, I don't need any cash. I'm just going to go out there and watch me come back. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do? I've got no cash on me. And they, it's not like they take credit cards at the cross country meet at state. So I'm like, whoa, no, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? So I, I tuck my tail between, beh between my legs and I start walking back to my car. So then I come, I come across the Logan View coach, Gary Samuelson. And I'm like, hey, Gary, how you doing? And he's like, he's like, good, you know. And, and, uh, and he's got his athlete with him. And, and I'm like, hey, Gary, I'm really embarrassed, but um, I didn't bring any cash. <laughs> can I borrow some money? <laughs> so he gives me 20 bucks so I can get into the state cross-country meeting. So anyway, so he probably went home with, and told his wife, it's like, Rex wrote such an idiot. <laughs> so anyway, so in this situation, 345 for every gallon of gas and 241 for every quart of oil has to be less than or equal to 50. So what we get in that situation is we get a graph of all the possible um, combinations of how many gallons of gas, how many quarts of oil. It's a picture of what I can buy. Okay. So the one thing I want to take a look at is something like 6 and 7. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Y is greater than or equal to the absolute value of x plus 3. Okay, well we know how to graph y equals the absolute value of x plus 3. We can do that two different ways. We can think of where the vertex is, or we can think of as it moved left, right, up, down. Okay, so what's this going to do? Left, right, up, down, what's it going to do? Left, 3. Okay, so it's going to look like this. And this one's solid because it's or equal to. And so now what I've done is I've cut the, cut it. before with the line we cut it into two half planes. Now I've cut it into two regions, okay? The region within the absolute value and the region exterior to the absolute value. The, the, the way you do it is still the same. Um, there's actually two ways. Let's pick zero, zero. Zero is greater than or equal to the absolute value is zero plus three. Zero is greater than or equal to three. That's false, so that doesn't work. So I'm going to shade. Yeah, I'm going to shade inside. And there's another way we can take a look at it. Since y is by itself, I want all the points where y's aren't equal to that expression for x, but where y's are greater than that expression. So that's another way we can tell right away that we're just going to shade up from that absolute value. Okay? So, um, so on, the, on this other one, y minus 6 is less than absolute value of x. Well, if I was going to, well, what would you do if you are going to graph this? Move the 6 over, because it's kind of different than we're used to seeing this. Okay. So then, where's this vertex going to be? 0, 6. Now it's outside, so it's up 6. So it's going to be at 6. Okay. And this one is going to still open up. Uh-oh, I made a mistake. Should be dotted. Okay, and this one, do you think we're going to shade up or down? Down. I wonder if your hiccups are, it can be heard on YouTube. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, um, so that's what we're going to work on tonight. We'll polish that up tomorrow, okay? So here we go. Let's, let's get going. Page 119. We're going to take a look at just a couple of these. Um, Let's go 12 and 13. Um, actually, I'll tell you what. We're going to, instead of, let's rewrite this. 12 through 16. Ooh. 20, 21, 23, okay. ooh, I like 24 too, Twenty-eight, and this will be due um, Thursday. So I'm going to just go ahead and tack on just a little bit more. 
38 through, um, we still need some practice with that, so I'm going to go ahead and throw that on there as well. Um, Forty-eight, and then we'll be done fifty-two through fifty-four. Focusing on that, and we're good to go.